Well, good morning, good evening, good night, and uh, good whatever else wherever you may be. This is Sketching Past Midnight. I am your somewhat humble host, uh, of course. I'll get it queued up here just in case the mystery needs to be solved. I am C.B. Smallwood, the greatest of on time, uh, the undisputed, the unchallenged, so it must be true. Ah, so, welcome. Welcome, indeed. I'm kind of getting warmed up here, so if I seem a little lost, that's, uh, that's all it is. I also must warn you, um, my son is, uh, you know, kind of half asleep, half awake, so this could be a short one, this could be a long one, this could be an in-betweener, I really don't know. Uh, I've got a little little thing of a, a glug glug, uh, I know you can't really tell, it's uh, chocolate milk, <laughs> going to sip that. Uh, also, before we get started, got me a bottle of water. I don't want to get the sweat on it, get the sweat on this paper. Hmm. Uh, I guess I'll leave the lid off. That water don't want to sit straight. I don't like that. So, uh, welcome everybody. I appreciate you uh, tuning in. For those of you that may tune in live, and also for you, for those of you that will watch the replay. Now, uh, today, uh, I, got, I got a couple of things to show you. got some papers, and then, of course, uh, as always, I actually do some sketching or drawing. It depends. Yeah, tomato, tomato, whatever. Uh, so, to get started, I have prepared. I'm actually a little bit prepared today. I'm usually not prepared. I thought I need to kind of up my game. So, here we go. Question of the day. What movie... Would you like to see a remake of? What movie would you like to see a remake of? So that is the question of the day to get us started off this wonderful, uh, cool night. You know, I'm starting to get more cool breezes uh, coming in where I live at, you know, signifying that maybe summer is, you know, letting up on its grip of the planet Earth. And it's, you know, the fall weather is going to kick in. Who knows? Or it could be getting closer to the Judgment Day where we don't know what the weather is. <laughs> but right now, things are slowly, very slowly, ever so slightly, getting a little bit cooler. Um, now, uh, here's what I'm working on. This is uh, one of the pages for... Um, Help me out, guys. What is this page of? Oh, Crimson Frog. Crimson Frog, my, uh, you know, story that I just have to kind of get out. I kind of just go, you know, I got to get that out. And also, um, something that, that that I'm really interested in, you know, it's it, this is probably going to be one of those one and dones when it's over. And, um, and maybe some good will come out of it. Maybe I will get a little bit of attention, get a little bit of rub from it, you know, because it's connected to Cyber Frog. Uh, maybe not. Uh, and then, you know, also have some great people that are helping me with this. Uh, a special thanks to Arch City Comics that have volunteered to uh, step in and letter this bad boy. And also uh, the uh, equally incredible Gib. Gibran. Is it Gibran? It's Gib. I'm going to say Gib. <laughs> the creator of Doom Barbarian. Which, by the way, if you don't know, Doom Barbarian is on Indiegogo, so you need to uh, get on the ball and check that out. Now, last I checked, he was around $300. He might have had a $1,500 goal to get there, so he's he's doing good. He's, he's well on his way, so help uh, push him over the edge to where he needs to go and, and uh, back that book. Um Okay, let's talk about these uh, little little thumbnails. I got thumbnails up the wazoo. And uh, so what is this? Well, this is uh, thumbnails for, um, well, what, what is it called? Uh, Wildcat. I forgot my own character. That's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. <laughs> I could probably run for president. <laughs> I hope I don't sting anyone that's... Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't mean to be personal with it. I'm just making a joke, making a joke. 
But anyway, Wildcat. Yeah, this is a Wildcat thumbnails for the um, first issue that I've been working on forever. And um, these, this is a couple of extra things where he's uh, getting murdered. He's getting slain. Uh, I, I make these little notes uh, just so like, you know, sometimes when I'm sketching it out with an ink pen, um, I don't get the body just right or the form just right. So I have to make little notes to remind myself like, okay, his head needs to be down. Because, uh, you know, he's uh, just got his brains blowed out there, but he's still freaking alive. <laughs> you know, um, so, you know, these other things and, and then remind myself because, you know, the art on here is not the best ever was, you know, bird's eye view, you know, remind myself of bird's eye view. Um, so this is part of the, the Wildcat story that, the, you know, for the first issue that I'm working on. I've also got other pa pages in my handy dandy uh, sketchbook that um, coincide with this. So I probably have anywhere from three to four sketch pages in my sketchbook. And I also have um, these three things. And as, as you can tell, I had these uh, lined out and I had it at work and stuff. And um, yeah, and I kind of quit <laughs> working on this. Because uh, some things changed in the story that made the story better, made it more, um, make more sense, and the story has has a driver. I don't know what you call it, but this thing that pushes everything forward. I have one. It's getting light and dark and light. I that's how powerful I am. You see that? Can you do that? Only I can do that. I can make the light get bright. <laughs> but anyway. Um, I found something in the Wildcat story that really pushed everything forward and really connects stuff in a really cool way. And so now uh, my new problem is I just need to come up with something weird or strange that Hess, one of the major bad guys in the story overall, is going to do. That's you know, uh, it's going to be interesting. So I just need to figure that out. And you know, right now my uh, taking it slow and and and. and casual you know walking around my loafers and if i had a bathrobe i'd wear one of those too just doing that and just letting it come to me and is really uh, working a lot and also you know when i'm at work and i have free time i just i just sit there like a weirdo and i zone out and i just zone out all together and uh let me pull this up I zone out all together and I just kind of um, I focus on the story that I'm working on in my head. I like to think about it. And I ask my supercomputer, which is my brain. I was like, brain, here's the question. The question is, how does this thing happen in the story? Why would that happen? And I don't quit asking myself that question until my brain gives me the answer. Your brain, your brain, my brain, all our brains are the best supercomputers on the planet. And and we don't we don't use them properly. I feel, or at least I don't. And so, when when you have problems in life, whether it's your bills, your career, or your comics, or whatever, ask your supercomputer a question, and don't quit asking it the question, because eventually it'll give you the answer. And it's been doing that. So I just have to remind myself to sit and and just think like a mother trucker. So what are we looking at now? Um, <laughs> we are looking at. Um, this is something different, but not, uh, the Wildcat Anthology, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, been living under a rock, uh, next to Patrick, um, I've been doing, I, I'm putting together, I'm assembling a team of only the best of the best, you know, uh, we're, we're, uh, basically we're taking the A team, we're kicking them out of the van and it's our van now. And we're going to, we're going to do like one of those cool vans too, where, you know, like how you got like all the, you know, wizards and stuff and unicorns on it. You know, those badass vans that they used to make that you never really see anymore. That That's what we're going to do with the A-Team's van. We're going to do that on the outside of it. We're going to go in. We're going to have our missile launchers and uh, super soakers just because, you know, a little bit of 90s in there. Got to throw that in there. And then we're going to have radar and high-tech gadgets. And we're, we're going to uh, abduct MacGyver. Uh, and 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 then he's going to like us, and he's going to teach us how to do things on the fly. And then we're also going to get his arch nemesis. You remember his arch nemesis, Murdoch? 
well, he's got money and resources, and we're going to put that to work for us, and we're going to make the most kick-ass anthology of all time. So that's the Wildcat Anthology. It's called uh, The Non-Canical Misadventures of Wildcat, The Anthology. It's purposely a long title because I think it's the most absurd thing I've ever heard of, and that's why I like it. So the story I'll be doing is uh, Wildcat Arctic Assassination. And uh, there was there was a writer out out in in the woods, all by his lonesome, calling out for an artist to to uh, pin this story. And uh, I decided that I would take him up on the challenge. You know, I, there was like a bunch bunch of people that had um, write me messages and stuff, and it takes me like ten years to get to them. Uh, and so everybody kind of like already paired up. It's it's paired up so far. And then, then I then I saw him, and then I read his story, and I was like, "Yeah, this, yeah, this, yeah, this will work. <laughs> this is really cool." So this is um, uh, B. W. Sims, the magnificent one, B. W. Sims, a uh, Wildcat story. I got the panels laid out. Uh, I know you really can't tell any anything that's happening, um, but you know. I just want to kind of get the vibe and get a general idea. And so I should be able to rock and roll fairly quickly uh, when it comes time to actually draw it, you know. And I got I made some, you know, notes to myself. You know, I come up with these little sayings to say at the beginning, at the end of my videos and these little things that I feel like it means something or, or you know, somewhat enjoyable to somebody's ears. Not my own. <laughs> so anyway, let's get dangerous and as a reminder let me post it up here again um the question of the day question of the day what movie would you like to see a remake of what movie would you like to see a re remake of and why you know you know those open response questions that you would get on some test uh and they would always ask you to answer the question and they and they want to know they put that word and why and <laughs> well, I'm asking you guys and why. Okay, let's zoom in here. I'm losing viewers. The more I talk, I go from six to five to four, three to one to zero. People's like, CB, I do not absolutely want to talk about movies right now. I'm just not in the mood for it. But you got to be, okay? Because this is a show, and we're going to make it entertaining, and we're going to make it somewhat fun. At least, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe people don't really think of my show as fun. Maybe they think of it as like like a car wreck, you know? Like a, It's one of those ones you have to slow down. You have to really look at the mangled bodies and stuff, you know? <laughs> one of those true crime stories. Where you're watching something that is terrible and horrific that happened to somebody else, but you can't stop watching. Maybe that's maybe that's what my show's like. <laughs> People's like, I don't know what I don't know what this weirdo's gonna do, but I I can't look away. I just can't do it. Well, good. I don't care why you're here as long as you're here. That's the main thing. Drawing the world's most crappiest antennas now i gotta say like ethan van scabber he does some pretty cool bugs you know i used his bugs for reference and and uh you know when i would go and go about and do my bug madness it, yeah, it just didn't come out as cool but what can you do you know what can you do you just gotta draw i think my bugs kind of came out I'm not going to say Sylvester like, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. It's got a lot of scritchy, scratchy vibe to it, where his is more, he's got this very super clean style. Everything's just, you know, taking a bath a little too much. It just keeps taking a bath. <laughs> you know. Bathing. Hmm. I'm going to sip my water. Now that I draw these antennas, I'm proud of myself. Uh, pat myself on the back. All right. I got the sinking feeling that everybody that's watching right now is drawing. 
I don't know why I feel that way. But something's telling me. My spider sense is tingling and it's like everybody's just watching this, is drawing, treating my show like it's freaking Bob Ross. How dare you guys. Okay, let's see here. <clears throat> Could zoom in just a little bit more. So you can actually see what's going on. I don't even know what the heck I draw out here. I'm a little confused. So I'm just going to wing it. You know, hope. There's a bug. I'm going to kill it. It's going to smush on the paper. And I'm going to flip it. Okay. Uh, Jeremy Burtz uh, writes, I'm working. Excellent, sir. There is nothing like working when you're watching Sketching Past Midnight live. Tooting my own horn. Got the ego on 12 tonight. Not 10. I, I dialed that notch up to like past 2. Or past... Past what? Past 10. There we go. Past 10. It doesn't matter. I'll figure it out here. Got to get my wit in in uh, in check here. All right. So since I put the question out, I guess I guess I'm going to answer it. I'll give you this time to stew on it and think on it. You know, um, what was I getting ready to say? I forgot. But anyway, the the question of the day was: What movie would you like to see a remake of? Um. But, uh, but, the, but, the, but, the, but the, the movie that I would like to see, I, I don't know if you have seen, seen this or not, but I would love, there's a bunch of movies I like to see a remake of. I would love to see a remake of um, Horror, Horror, Horror Express. All right, now Horror Express came out like, God, I don't know, early 70s maybe? It had um, Peter Cushion, Peter Peter, I don't know. He always played uh, Van Helsing in uh, in those Hammer films, and it may have also had uh, Christopher Lee, who uh, played Dracula, in all those uh, all those um, you know Hammer films as well. I don't know why I'm having trouble using English. Um, and I think it had uh, freaking um, Kojak in it. What, what, is, what is that guy's name? Uh, he played Maggot in the Dirty Dozen. It's, it's right, right on the tip of my tongue. Um, it's it's right there, and I can't think. Well, it doesn't matter. Whatever his name is, he was in it too. Some woman, <laughs> just some woman. I don't know. And some guy, and there you go. That was that was the cast, and the premise of the movie of um, Horror Express. Okay, it was set back in the night. 1910s maybe 1920s I'm not for sure uh, and it seems like there's this train that kind of goes through Russia into Europe I can't remember I don't know uh, that, that's not the Oriental Express is it I'm not sure what it was called but it's you know one of those trains but anyway uh, so the premise of the story is this you know uh, I guess some archaeologists find in the middle of nowhere frozen a caveman and it, it is the scariest, messed up looking caveman that you've ever seen in your life, right? And uh, I think Peter Cushion, I don't, I'm probably not pronouncing his right name right. It's probably not even Peter at all or Cushion, but whatever the guy that played Van Helsing in the vampire movies. He's a scientist and he uh, he's an archaeologist and he ends up on this train, okay? This Russian controlled train or whatever. And he just, he's just dying to look at this artifact and it's like cursed. Everybody gets near it, you know, horrific things happen and all this other stuff. Uh, this, this, um, this caveman that's in ice, that's, uh, locked in this, uh, box. Well, once he gets on the train, he finally gets a look, you know, and, uh, it's, it's like Harry, you can't even make out the face. It's, it's just really good. You know, that, that's some good movie making right there. You know, didn't need much special effects. Uh, what, what little they did was just terrific, you know? 
Uh, but anyway, so what ends up happening, I don't want to ruin the whole movie for you, but there's a lot of cool stuff in it. Like, uh, basically the caveman wakes up, his eyes glow red. He can do like some mind control stuff and everything. And secretly, this movie is a Lovecraftian movie because um, the 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 life essence that was in the uh, freaking um, caveman went into another human being. And it turns out, you know, like, well, first of all, they, they actually developed some rudimentary technology. It seems like it's doable for some reason, but it it's probably pure, pure fiction. They were able to t look through the eyes of the caveman using some whatever technology that they had developed and see the last thing it saw, and they got to see dinosaurs and stuff. And it, oh, it's just it's just really cool, you know. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> eh, whatever, it's cool. Oh, I'm not going to get into the science of everything, you know, dinosaurs and caveman, and then on top of that, being able to see the last thing somebody saw when they died, you know. But it's it's really cool sci-fi and um sorry it's getting blurry i don't know what the hell is the matter with this thing um and uh, the last cool thing i'm going to say about horror express is basically the entity that is in the caveman crash landed during prehistoric times and it, it passed on its life essence to the most intelligent thing it could find which was the caveman and it had been stuck in that caveman for Millions of years or whatever. I don't know. And um, I'm like, that is really, really cool. And to be honest, not to be honest, but to, to add to that, I would love to see a comic book drawn um, of this by Mike Manola because the, the time period is a time period that um, Mike Manola, you know, excels at and, and does a lot in his comics. So, this is like a natural fit. And if they did a remake, I would want them to study Mike Manola's work and incorporate that into the film as far as like the art sets and designs and stuff like that to add another uh, dimension of, you know, like creepiness and stuff to it. But I love Horror Express. I think you will too. It's, it's, it's an enjoyable movie if you get bored. You know, you know where I, you know how I found Horror Express? There was a uh, Dollar Tree or Dollar Mania where everything is literally a dollar. And it was like in this uh, DVD uh, bin of the, you know, it's one of those DVD bins where they got like some lady. It's got an exercise video, buns of steel or something. They got like maybe like a Tai Chi video uh, and like these uh, terrible, awful, terrible, terrible, awful uh, movies that nobody wants to watch that nobody watched them when they came out and nobody watched them when they went to home video. And then, then there's of course a couple of gems that you find like horror express. And, uh, that's how I came acquainted with the film. It's great. Um, so you know, watch it. If you're not seen it, I think you will enjoy it. And I'd like to see a remake of it. Now who would star in it? Who hell if I know, I, that's a good one. That is a good one. I don't know who would star in that, but I would love to see it. But, you know, it's one of those things. Uh, Hollywood has a very nasty habit of making terrible remakes and then also making remakes of movies that they should never, ever, ever touch with a 10-foot pole, such as uh, The Thing, John Carpenter's The Thing. Now, first of all, I did like the prequel, though it did have some problems. It did have some problems. Uh, one or two things that needed to fix. And also relying a little bit too heavy on a few of, um, I don't want to say the tropes, but some of the things that made the Thing movie uh, great. John Carpenter's The Thing. You know, they needed to differentiate it just a little bit. But the Thing prequel was still pretty good overall. Could have been better, but, you know, I'd watch it. I'd buy it. Um, and, and to me, you know, if you buy a movie, that is the, that's the ultimate compliment. That means like, you know, that's how much you'll like it. So uh, typically when I say I would buy it, that's what I mean. <laughs> that's what I mean. Uh, anyway, what is the other, other crap I was going to say about it? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's, there's going to be a thing remake, a thing remake. 
And I don't know what, what is the matter with uh, John Carpenter, but he needs to stop it. John Carpenter, if you're a fan of this show, which I know you're not, <laughs> but in some alternate reality where you are, please don't mess around and do this remake. Do a sequel, do a prequel, but do not do a remake. There is nothing wrong with the original, and you know there's nothing wrong with the original. That's the beat at all, uh, and we all know why you're doing this. And so you need to hop into this reality, grab this version of yourself, shake him, smack him, and get him to see the light. You know, don't mess with your legacy like that. You know, the reason, in my, in my opinion, really this ain't an opinion. This is, I consider this fact that uh, John Carpenter's doing a remake is for money. Uh, Blumhouse is a studio that's, uh, I believe it's going to be doing this and, uh, orchestrating this, this, uh, travesty. And, um, John Carpenter is the producer. (laughs) And a couple of these movies that he's so-called produced, he's done, he's not really produced them. What he did was he allowed them to use his name on some of these, uh, new remakes of some of his movies. Uh, just, you know, put him in the credits while he gets a check for it, you know, permission for them to do a remake and put his name on the credits, you know, just, you know, and, and, and I think, you know, some people's like, ah, you know, John Carpenter, they see his name in the credits and they get excited and they think that he's involved in it. And then, you know, you can tell, you can tell when John Carpenter is actually involved in the movie, there's, there's a certain look and feel to a John Carpenter movie that's very unmistakable, you know. Anyway, um, some of you would be like, I don't like what you're saying about John Carpenter. How dare you? It's blasphemous. No, no, I can't help it. He's the one that's doing it. He's the one that's getting carried away here. Uh, Freaking John Carpenter. Why are you doing that, brother? I mean, I know why the money, but really, come on. You, you have to be all right now, right? Those Halloween films had to pay off for you at some point. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get back to making movies. Get back to making movies yourself instead of this eh, stuff that you're doing. Stop it. And some of you might be like, CB, you know, how do you know it's just for the money? Well, I mean, like, for example, I mean, this ain't the best example. Uh, freaking Rob Zombie, you know, when he was doing the Halloween remake, which. I actually like the Halloween remake. I didn't watch the second one that he did, but I watched the first one and I thought it was really good. Uh, it took the, you know, the best elements of, um, Halloween and he added something of his own to it. Uh, it's a different beast. It's respectful to the original, but at the same time it it goes into a slightly different route and it's, and it's still a good movie. I, I enjoy, I enjoyed that. You know, some people didn't, but like, Man, compared to where the franchise was, <laughs> you know, hey, uh, Rob Zombie reinvent. Look at this. Nobody wants to see bugs. Go away. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Put that down. Put this down. But considering where the Halloween franchise was, you know, it, he he brought it back to life. So he deserves some some credit for that. Let me drink some water here. Uh, all right, me, me, um, see if there's any comments here. Megadeth Knight. Well, first of all, Megadeth Knight, before I answer your comment, uh, I, I love your username. That is, you know, Megadeth. <laughs> so I'm all about that. I'm all about that. I'm looking forward to the new Megadeth album. I think it's going to be pretty cool. The last one was great. Uh, what was it called? Fatal Illusion or, um, no, no, it wasn't Fatal Illusion. It was something else. Whatever. You know what the name of the album is. It was a good album. It was a good album. You know, I felt like Metallica put out a great album. Megadeth put out a great album. And, you know, I'm curious what Dave is going to do with his latest effort, but, uh, kind of getting sidetracked here. 
got I saw I saw Mega in there and I got excited. But Megadeth Knight says, uh, "Yeah, hope you do this more." Well, what the crap? Uh, if I can scroll back up here, uh, hope you do this more. It's nice to have company when sticking yourself to the drafting table. In- indeed, you know, I like it when everybody gets together and and um, kind of does their thing. You know, it's sort of like a team effort. Um, one of my fantasies growing up, and fantasy always sounds. I don't want to say perverted, but sexual, but I don't mean it that way. <laughs> One of my fantasies growing up is, you know, being part of a, a studio, you know, working with other artists, writers, colors, letters, blah, 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 you know, all those guys together in a studio hanging out, you know, where we can look at what each other's drawing and talk about it. And, and then we can help each other and like, I was like, ah, oh, CB, you know, you, looks like you're having trouble drawing feet. You know, it's like, you think? <laughs> let me let me show you how it's done, you know, and they show me. and Or maybe like I need help with a layout or they need help with a layout. And I just come over and like, yeah, well, here, how about try this? Yeah. Maybe that'll work better for you, you know. It's like, oh, that's cool. They give me something to work with. Yeah. I always like the idea of that, you know, just everybody working together in the studio and stuff and then. Maybe there'll be like a break time or something, you know, where everybody go out to eat together. I like I like that communal thing. That it's always been kind of like my fantasy. My fantasy. I probably didn't, don't need to use that word. But anyway, I think one day I will create that. You know, uh, not just online, but also you know in reality. You know, I take take um, kids or whatever. Or adults, doesn't matter, both, either or. And start start a program, you know, find a building, you know, and, and just teach them the trade, teach them everything I know. I'm not saying that um, I'm a Mark Savestri or Jim Lee or anybody like that, but but once I get good enough one day and, and have the resources, you know, I want to teach them everything I know, you know, how how to color, how to how to well, you know, by then, maybe I know how to write, but, you know, how to write and how to ink and letter, do all these things, you know, draw. And and tell them the things that they need to know, you know, so that uh, they don't waste a bunch of time, you know. There's a lot of stuff, you know, that, that you just don't don't know, you know, that you think you know, but you don't know how things work when it comes to comics. And if you knew these things when you were younger, oh man, all of us would be much more efficient beast, you know. We would be getting it done like no other. I know I would. At least I think I would. Yeah, I would. I'd, I'd be I'd be rocking and rolling. da na 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 da da you got Alvin and Chuck Monks in my head. That's, that's what my son was listening to. Say Alvin something and Theodore. <laughs> Let me sip my water here. <clears throat> okay. Um... Gil bro to crank it to 11 and break the break off that knob. I, I, I have, I will. And, um, I'll find like one of those, uh, amp amplifiers and then I'll, I'll blast it way past where I broke the knob off. I'll take it that far. I, cause I don't know when to stop. I hopefully I'm still recording, but, uh, I minimized my screen by accident. Dang it. Uh, Abe Sapien says in response to who was the Kojak guy in Horror Express and his answer was Tony Savalas. I, sw- I swear, Savalas, I think that's how you pronounce his last name. I, 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 I almost said his name. Tony Savalas. He's, he's a character. You don't see, you don't, you see people like that, you know, nowadays. Where are the freaking ugly men in Hollywood? Why does there... 
Why does everybody have to be beautiful in movies? That's not real. What? What? I mean, what? What is that? It's weird. I mean, I miss I miss the seventies and the eighties. The eighties was kind of like the last hurrah of that when you would see ugly men or average men and women in, in movies, you know, and it added a certain reality, a certain, I don't know, added a certain something to that stuff. And see, the cool thing is it really made the, uh, exceptional people stand out, uh, not to be crude or mean or whatever, you know, there's, <laughs> there are some girls. Okay. There are some girls in this world that will purposely find uh, other girls that are uglier than them. So that that way that they stand out when they walk in a pact. (laughs) Not all girls do that, but there are some, you know? And so that in that theory, in that train of thought, um, you know, in the seventies and eighties, maybe the sixties, you know, you get some ugly dudes, Ugly went ladies, and it would make the pretty people look even even more uh, pretty, uh, the pretty and handsome and all that good stuff, you know. <clears throat> I don't know what this little spot is, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kind of put it in there, you know. I don't think anybody else is gonna know what it is either, but you know, that's what it is, you know. That's how that's how I roll. When I don't know when something is. I slap on the ink and I make it into something new. Yeah, I think it looks cool. I like, I like, I like how it's coming together. And I, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I drew the borders right before I went live because I was like, I will not make that mistake again. Because sometimes I get carried away and I do naughty things that I shouldn't do. Yeah, let's see. Answer some more uh, comments. <clears throat> Abe Sapien says, I don't see my Leprechaun remake. I keep it creepy and no space trips. Yeah, that would, yeah, that'd be cool. I, I like the original Leprechaun and it seems like there's a sequel. There's like a bunch of sequels. Uh, one of them, um, one of the last sequels I saw was when he went to Las Vegas or something. Where's my gold? Where's me gold? Where's me gold? That don't, that don't sound like him at all, but we'll pretend that it does. I'm slopping more and more ink on here just because I can. Getting carried away, but that's okay. As long as I don't get too destructive with it. Huh. Okay. I think what I need to do is zoom out. So I can get a good gant- gander here. Oh. There we go. Yeah, it's coming together good. I'll I'll ink the uh, I'll ink the bo- borders last, and anything that doesn't match up with the border, I'll draw around it. And if if I draw in the border, I'll just gel pen it out or whatever, you know. Or I'll let my colorist save me. Wink, wink. Ah. <laughs> uh. Let's see here. Uh, I guess, I th- you know, what I'd like to do is I need to go back up to this uh, top page here and kind of knock something out. Because when I drew the border, um, some of the stuff here just kind of went a different direction. So look at the control. Did you see the control on that? You didn't. You didn't. That was some real control because I got some ink on here and that ink really wants to pour on this brush. I deserve, I think I deserve an award for that. If I don't get one in the mail, I'm going to be very mad. I will not be pleased with you all. And I don't know, whatever, just draw that down. Looks like he's, yeah. Put something right there. And I just I guess I'll go ahead and thicken it up since I'm already going crazy with it. And I'm gonna go over here. 
kind of do some uh, little squiggly nonsense and then uh, just so uh, I stay kind of consistent kind of pepper me in some um, scritchy scratchies so that way they come down to the border here not with the US Mexico and Canada but the the border on this page it was like you're not funny CB don't even try it I already went there it's my show I get to tell jokes that nobody laughs at but me let's see here let me uh, slap down some random inks See so if I can just get some variety looking on on the uh, on this booger. I'm mucking it up a little bit, but you know, when, once you start going going this route, you kind of have to. You can't stop because then it's just going to be awkward. <laughs> it's just that's just the way it is. It's just going to be an awkward mess. So you, you you're kind of committed to whatever the crap he was doing in the first place or at least i am i don't know about you guys you yens yens might be able to pull off these miracles that are perfect the first go around but even though i am the greatest of all time i have i have difficulties oh yes come in here and we're gonna shoot 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 now, I had some other movies in mind what time I'm doing this that I would like to see um, remakes of. You know, and I'm very particular about what movies get remade because, you know, I think if a movie's a cult classic like The Thing, like, how can you do better than, than the original? You can't. I mean, some of you would be like, oh, yes, you can. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm going to be absolutist right now. You're just wrong. Can't do better than John Carpenter's The Thing. Don't mess with that. You can do a sequel. You can do a prequel. But don't do a remake. I'm using this Jill. Jill. It's not It's not Jane or Jill. It's a gel. It's a gel. I'm using this gel pen now. Actually got too much scritching and scratching. But that's okay because uh, these uh, Vespas, whatever, they, they excrete poop, whatever, uh, blood honey. <laughs> so I guess... Um, it's okay. I'm trying to add some, um, variations of scritch scratch so that way it stands out. I don't have too much, uh, too much same type of strokes. Alrighty. Alright, so, yeah, so that's the top panel. Oh, that looks so brow and I think once it's colored, it's gonna look look better. Give rights when in doubt, black it out. That's right. Absolutely. All right. Uh, probably the best panel so far. Maybe I don't know. Why am I still inking the same thing? I can't stop. Can't stop myself. All right, so anyway. All right, let's look at this um, third panel. So I was talking about other remakes I'd like to see. And um, what are they? Should have came a little bit better prepared, but I thought I did. I thought I did. I actually had a question of the day. had a little, little, little bit of stuff I wanted to talk about. But I'm only so prepared. All right, so what I would like to see in other remakes. Now I've thought about this stuff before. You know, uh, I make a conscious mental thing like I'd like I'd like to see a remake of that. But but of course I got a little bit of ego to me, so it's more like I would like to remake that. You know, <laughs> even though I've not done any type of cinematography, I've not directed anything or anything like that. But whatever, these these are my dreams, guys and gals. Don't take it from me. So, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Remakes, remakes. What kind of remakes would I like to see? Now, 
Abe was talking about Leprechaun. Hmm, maybe that can trigger something in my head, like a remake of something. I don't know. I'm gonna ha- I'm gonna have to really think on it. One time I'm thinking I'm working on right now. This is a um, it's a bird's eye view of this alien running and uh, this Vespus, which you know Vespus is alien too. You know they're alien to that world. It's being chased. I'm peppering in the little uh, honeycomb thingamajiggers. You know, that reminds me, um, in a way, I don't want to see a remake of this, but I wouldn't mind. Have you, have you, have you all seen that, um, that movie from the eighties called the stuff? It's called the stuff. Now YouTube, who've been a whore about things in the past couple of years, They've been making this platform less and less awesome and more and more average and more and more cor- corporate, L- little, little sanitized, sucking the fun out of this whole platform. But at one point, you could type in 1980s horror movies and stuff like that. So uh, it might be still there. You can type in the stuff, 1980s, something other, or 1980s horror movies, or just type in the stuff movie or full movie. You might be able to find it here on YouTube and watch it. It is a terrific uh, movie. It's just a fun movie. And I'll give you the premise, okay? I don't want to give too much away for those of you that haven't seen it. It's got cool special effects in it. It's a little bit cheesy, but it's not like, for those of you that like things a little bit more serious, it's not like so cheesy that you have to spit it out and disgust. (laughs) You know? Uh... It's just the right right amount of cheese, you know. So, where is my train of thought? Oh yeah, 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 the the stuff. So, who does it star? Well, there was this actor in it. You know, he, he I think he plays a. Um, I can't remember if he was a private investigator or if he was a reporter. It might have been a reporter. And i have not seen this guy in too many movies, but he is recognizable. He did play in a couple other stuff after the movie. The last thing that I seen him in was the 4400, 4400. It was a TV series about these um, playing uh, these 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 no, these people that had disappeared all over the earth in the past 40 years, give or take 40, 60 years, and then they just reappear all of a sudden, you know. And, um, and this guy from the stuff was one of those people. Well, anyway, that has nothing to do with this movie. I'm just trying to, you know, tell you who that actor is. Maybe that's helpful to you if you've seen that series. I only started watching the 4400 like a couple of days ago and I got like three episodes in. It's, it's interesting, you know, it's interesting and it, it has a little bit of holes in it, you know, writing wise. Um, that, that uh, annoy me and, uh, mainly just like people not doing things that, that are natural that people would actually do in real life, kind of, kind of forced conflicts and and forced stupidity just to move the story forward. You know, I hate that forced stupidity and forced conflict in, in movies and television is just like, Hmm, that's so unnecessary. That reminds me, like I, I really disliked uh, the uh, the reporter in um, Kong Skull Island, you know, that King Kong Skull Island movie, which I really love that movie. I just, I just really disliked her character. I think that might have been Brie Larson. All right, let's back up, guys. Let's back up. I kind of I, I went over uh, a King Kong movie, the forty four hundred TV series, and the stuff. Let's bring it back to the stuff. Okay, let's bring it back to that. So I'm recommending that you watch the stuff, okay? I was trying to help you figure out that the one of the, ma- the main stars of the show. I don't know what the guy's name is, uh, but now you know something else that he starred in. And uh, the guy's actually, you know, a fairly decent actor. You know, he's just, uh, he's, he's in- endearing for some reason, and I have no idea why. 
But in the show of the stuff, in the show of the stuff, basically, there's this food product that's in stores everywhere, and everybody's going gaga crazy over it. And it's it's basically like a yogurt, and it's called the stuff. And everybody just can't get enough of the stuff. And it's changing people. People are starting to change their behaviors. Everybody seems to act a lot happier, but everybody seems to want you to eat the stuff. And so that's the premise of the whole movie. What is the stuff? Why are people going gaga? There's a conspiracy. You know, and, and the interesting thing about it is, you know, they actually meet up with, uh, um, like, uh, some militia types, you know, that, uh, that were dispensed as conspiracy theorists and they get, you know, they kind of get proven right, I guess, you know, and <laughs> so that's pretty cool. It's a fun little movie. Uh, watch the stuff. You will enjoy it. Uh, and I wouldn't mind seeing a rem- remake of it, but the originals find the way it is, you know, <sighs> let's see. Um, what else we got here? <laughs> Uh, Gib wants to remind everyone that Freaky Faces, Freaky Faces on Kickstarter. Okay, so there's a link. You should be able to find that in the chat and scroll up to that, click on that, check it out. Uh, Freaky Faces on Kickstarter. Or you can like Google it. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Abe writes, uh, so a studio set up like CrossGen. I wanted to get an internship there. And get one of their books back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just like CrossGen, uh, like um, Homage Studios, uh, like uh, Maximum Press or Extreme Studios, like that, you know. Or like the old uh, Marvel, you know, bullpen, you know, back, way back in the day, you know. I, I, I want that collaboration and, and that environment where everybody is just trying to help each other and, and, and everybody, and whether or not they're helping each other or not, where everybody is just basically trying to get stuff done and, and you, you're working with your peers and you're watching them work and it, it inspires you, you know. I find it very, very uplifting, very inspiring, you know, because it makes it, you know, drawing comics writing comics doing all this stuff it's very it's very lonely to get all sad and depressing about it but you know being honest it's just it's a lot <laughs> it can be a very lonely lonely thing you know and then you add on top of that you know i think everybody's experienced this where you have people that uh that are around you that are not uh comic people they don't read comics they don't drop make comics they don't understand the the the, the fandom they don't understand the medium and they don't. And they don't understand that it's possible for somebody to make a living at that. All they see, uh, the regular folk, is you know you're devoting a lot of your time to um, drawing or writing or wh- whatever it is, and it's like, well, you know, uh, they're hiring at this factory. You want to work at this factory? Work yourself to the bone. Does that sound good to you? you? Make good money, but you'll never get to spend it. I don't know. I, I think I want to draw comics for a living. You know, I, I, I'm working a job right now that, that I find tolerable. I, I don't know if I really want to. You don't want to make money? Well, yeah. I want to make money. <laughs> but anyway, it's, uh, comics is uh, kind of a lonely profession, you know. The only one that sees value often in what you're doing is, is you. And so I think it's cool. Um, to be in a studio where you're working with other people that have a lot of the same goals and ideas and stuff as you, you know, that are trying to uh, make comics, are making comics, you know, that sort of thing. And I will, you know... Let's see, I really have to set my mind to it. You know, there's a lot of things I will say I will to. And I make them happen. I'm not really ready to make that commitment yet to say that I will create a studio. I really want to create a studio. 
Uh, but the thing that I will do right now is make comics. I need to get, I need to get stuff done. I need to have results. I need to have things to show people. I need to have things that I'm going to be proud about, you know? And, uh, I need to create a levels of success. So that way is, uh, as I become a tide, I can rise all boats. I want to, that's what I want to be. I want to be a. I want the. I don't want to be another boat in the sea. I want to be the tide itself, and all the boats around me. I want to raise them up, you know, because as the tide rises, all the boats uh, do the same. That bug, that bug looks decent right there. Yeah, not too bad. Let's see. Uh, uh, Gib writes, uh, the remake he would like to see is any which way but loose, but with Eastwood Sun. I have no idea what Eastwood Sun looks like. Does he look a lot like Eastwood? Are you wanting to see uh, Clint Eastwood star in it? And his son also being, or do you want his son to be the star? You know, these are the questions. Acquiring minds want to know. I love films like any way which, uh, but loose any which way you can because uh, first of all they're great movies. They're just so unusual, you know. That movie. Actually, you know, movies like that actually inspired Wildcat, you know. Just the off the wall insanity and stuff like that and, and the interactions between like uh the Black Widows and Clint Eastwood and stuff. Uh, you know, Fido Beto, you know, whatever. Uh a lot of that made its way into my writing of Wildcat. I know you haven't really seen a lot of that here lately because I'm building up to it, you know, I'm I'm laying the foundation of what Wildcat will become, you know. But a lot, of that, a lot of those ideas came from that, you know, from Clint Eastwood movies, from trauma movies, uh, like uh, uh, Toxic Avenger, uh, Nukem High. Uh, shit, what else, what else is there? Uh, there's a bunch of them. <laughs> I don't know. uh there's all kinds of absurd, you know, trauma movies. A lot of that bizarre humor or that over-the-top outrageous stuff, you know, filtered into my young mind and helped influence my prepubescent brain forever, destroying whatever hope there was for me to have a factory job. Which I still could end up doing. <laughs> yeah. I've worked in factories. Fast food. Was a um, was an electrician for a week. Was uh, worked in um, woodworking for a couple of weeks. Um, I don't know what else I have I done. Worked in retail. I don't know. Worked in all kinds of different jobs. I can't remember them all. Does that mean I can't hold a job? Is that what it is? Wayne's Wayne's even talking about where I'm working at. It's nosy. Okay. I like how that's yeah, turning out. Okay, so we got th that roughly, almost, maybe. Yeah, I need to draw the shadows of the antlers, so. Might be a bit much to do that, may make it look confusing, but, you know, I mean, realistically, it's a giant bug, the antlers would cast a shadow, so. But just because it's scientifically accurate doesn't mean you have to draw it, you know, if it's going to make it confusing to the eye. 
give myself my own um, advice here. <laughs> uh, Abe writes, how about a new cyborg? Instead of uh, Atlanta, it would be centered in Portland. Could use Van Damme still. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, honestly, you know, whether it be Cyborg or any other movie, they missed the opportunity to uh, film some horror movies, some zombie movies and stuff like that in in uh, New Orleans or in that in that area, a lot of those neighborhoods after uh, Katrina. Yeah. Big missed opportunity. Now, there was a TV show, uh, by the way. I can't think what that TV show is called, but there was a TV show that actually took people, dropped them off, and pretended it was the post-apocalypse, and they and basically they were charged with uh, surviving and trying to rebuild civilization, you know, and they would get electric up and running, and they had to defend their um, they had to defend their outpost with uh, you know however they did against raiders and stuff, and it was really cool. It was a really cool show, you know. It was interesting, you know, and it was filmed in in the ruins of. Uh, of this uh, town, you know, that, that that had been abandoned after the the hurricane had hit it, you know. <laughs> I have no idea what the town looks like now, you know, but uh, it's interesting. But, yeah, Cyborg, a new Cyborg movie. You, you could put it in Portland. You probably you could probably use the, the, the Antifa people as uh, extras. I could see them being down for it, too, that they would actually stop stop rioting for a minute, you know, so they can have their 15 minutes of fame, you know, something that's not, you know, just them filming themselves on the phone, their buddies doing dumb stuff. And, um, yeah, put Van Damme in it. Cyborg was like one of these unexpected hits. I don't think it was ever supposed to be like it was. Now, a lot of people don't sit and remember fondly Cyborg and, like they do, like probably like Terminator and all this other stuff, but it it was a good movie and it, it helped. Uh, well, unless I'm mistaken, it helped launch uh, Jean Claude Jean Claude Van Damme's career. If you just want to hear me talk out my butt more, you just let me know. I'm pretty good at that stuff. Uh, Jim Cox, uh, welcome Jim Cox. Uh, are you going to relaunch Wildcats, uh, soon? Are you going to relaunch it soon? I'm working on it. I'm going to do it as soon as, as possible. But, um, but my thing is I need to get it right. You know, I really, really need to get it right. Uh, and the reason is I have a, a really cool story that I want to tell. And, um, and it's like, I, I can't muck it up, you know? I, and, and also I want to make sure I do the best art that I can possibly do for it. And I feel like now, now I'm not really playing when I say this and, and I'm not being e egotistical when I say it, I feel like I just keep, I'm getting better and better at what I'm doing. And, um, and I want the the Wildcat stuff that I'm doing to reflect that. I had a few problems with the original story. And I don't know where the heck my, I have like two comics of Wildcat that that I had you know printed off from the printer. One one, one was a uh, one that they sent me at her. I told them there was a few problems with the initial print, and and so I can actually flip through it and show you. But I don't know. I don't even know where it's at. I think it's in another room. I don't know. I didn't bother to look for it really hardcore. Uh, but anyway, I had a few art problems with it, a few things that didn't make sense. I'm, I'm very stickler. I'm, I'm a big stickler for things to make sense. Yeah, I, I can sometimes be tough on, 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 on other people or especially, you know, people that make movies or TV shows. But I also apply a lot of that same um, critical eye to, to what I'm doing. You know, it's only fair. Well, what, what do they say? What's, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Maybe, I don't know, whatever. What is the gander? I never knew that, but I understood what it meant. <laughs> so anyway, um, shoot. Wildcat. Okay, so uh, 
I really want to craft a really good story. And um, I felt like the art and story that I did for the original first issue was solid. I really do. Um, but something was nagging at me. Something was telling me that I can do better. Uh, that it, that my Wildcat story needs something more. And um, the more I thought about it, uh, the more uncomfortable I felt, you know. And then eventually I come to realize that, you know, if, if you're having these doubts, if you're having these second guesses or whatever, you need to trust your gut and your intuition. It's trying to tell you something. And I'm glad I listened because, like, you know, taking my time and really thinking about Wildcat and the story that I'm wanting to tell has paid off in a big way. I got a really cool story that I'm putting together with it. And it's actually making Wildcat more and more uh, original and uh, more interesting. And there are, there are a lot of comics that are being put out uh, uh, right now where there, there's, you know, there's, there can be some cool art or decent art or whatever, but there's, there's uh, no story. Whereas, you know, it's, it's like there, there's a commercial from back in the 80s. No, I guess it was the 80s, maybe early 90s. These, uh, these old ladies, and they go, where's the beef? Where's the beef? <laughs> it actually became part of a campaign slogan. I think it was, um, who did George Bush run against back then? Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know. I, I do know, but I can't think of his name. I don't, I'm not even going to try. You know, but anyway... And that's the thing, you know, I want my, I want my story to have the beef. I don't want you just to have pretty pictures to look at. I want you to really enjoy what you're reading. And, and the reason is because I want you to come back and I want you to get more. And I want you to be like, this is great. I'm a fan and, and, uh, I'm, I'm going to keep buying whatever it is that you're putting out because I can tell that, that you care about it because you're trying to make me care about it. And I do because you've invested time in the character development, invested time in, in, in developing the story, this mystery, and all these other things, you know. And I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to achieve that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull that off, but I'm going to try. And I will, I will, you know, the, the Wildcat thing is going to be done, you know, because the original first issue I had it uh, uh, penciled, inked colored it was all me uh in, in the originally uh and also uh i was i had 19 pages of the script done and i was getting ready to start lettering it of the uh, 24 pages um and also the the incredible fantastic robert johnston was helping me uh, repackage the original uh first issue uh cleaning it up and 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 uh, you know, making it better and stuff like that. And, uh, I'd like to release uh, the original first issue at some point, you know, so people can see, you know, what it was and then, and compare it to this new th first issue that I'm working on, you know, which, um, which they're, they're similar, but, but it's like, but not, you know, night and day at the same time. How would I compare it? Would it be a good comparison? It's sort of like you got George Romero's uh, Night of the Living Dead, and then you got Tom Savini's Night of the Living Dead. Same thing, but there's some, there's some big differences at the same time that really adds to it. And both of them have their own charm, you know, their own validity or whatever. But I, I will... Um, have Wildcat in your hands as soon as possible. I'm just uh, just figuring out a few story things, and, and once I get those out of the way, I'm going to be rocking and rolling. I'm, I'm going to be hitting it hard, like a like a punching bag, like not like a punching bag, like Rocky in a meat locker. That's how hard I'm going to be hitting it. And then you know, all my competitors are going to be watching on television. You know, as I'm. As I'm hitting the Wildcat comics hard, and then they're gonna be watching me break ribs and stuff. They're gonna be like Apollo Creed and 
Well, no, no. They're going to be like Apollo Creed in the sense that, you know, they're not going to take me serious. But like, you know, somebody on their creative team is going to be like, uh, come on, come here, Apollo. Come, come, come look at C.P. Smallwood over here. Draw and walk out. I ah, ain't got time for that. And they're watching me break the ribs on that meat. And they're like, mmm, I'm coming for you. <laughs> I'm coming for you. That's right. Be afraid. Okay, I'm going to put this brush up now because uh, we got to the point where we're at this bottom panel. And this bottom panel, I've not really drawn much at all. I kind of slopped together um, kind of like a rough um, thing. I, I guess it is a rough. I don't know. So I need, to, I need to be careful. I need to be careful about what I'm doing. I don't want to mess it up. So let me uh, put this up. I need to use my brain power here. Uh, probably need to get my pencil and kind of flesh it out a little bit better and uh, sip some water. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> uh, Gib writes uh, in reference to um, the son of Clint Eastwood being in a remake of uh, Any Way Which You Can or Any Way Which Is Loose. One of those. Um Gib writes, his son playing his role, and he looks just like his dad. Oh, that's awesome. You know what that means. Something that comic fans have secretly wanted, but never got. A clean Eastwood is Wolverine. Let's just get his boy. Get him some sideburns. Uh, and uh, there you go. Uh, or you know what? We could have him uh, get some steroids, hit some weights. Uh, put some uh, triangle tattoos on his head, grow some sideburns, and he can play Wildcat instead. That'd be better. <laughs> uh, Gib, you're awesome. Uh, he also shares the Indie Comics Explosion Facebook group. And let me tell you what this uh, is about, the Indie Comics Facebook Explosion thingamajigger. Okay, that was an experiment. It still is an experiment. To unite fans and indie comic creators together because there's a lot of Facebook groups where they're both separate. Now, right now, it's very, 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 very in the early stages. It's in its infancy stage. And so we all got to kind of help out and, and and help it limp along, teach it to walk. No, no, we got to first teach it to crawl, you know, roll over in its belly and then get it to this position where it might be able to walk before it takes off running now. So it's very, very slow going. So we're almost at 40 members. Wow. <laughs> almost at 40 members. But I promise you, okay, I promise you that I'm a machine, okay? I know I know, I know, know how to do things here. Uh, when, when, when I'm not busy with this stuff, when I'm not busy, you know, uh, thumbnailing and working on too many projects, <laughs> too many projects, I will sit down and I will, I will, uh, make Indie Comics Explosion my special mission. And I will get, you know, at least a couple hundred people, uh, part of the group. Uh, right now I have been... Uh, kind of being slow and steady with it. So one of the things I'm doing right now to kind of grow the group is, and this is something that I've been neglecting to do uh, as well. Like on Facebook, I started adding a lot of artists. Um, started, you know, friending them, friending them. I'm started friending a lot of artists. And I'm getting to know these artists slowly but surely. And it's really, that stuff is so, so, so hard for me. Now, what I'm doing right now is easy because I can just talk. It records, it plays, and then as you um, make comments or ask questions, you know, it's, it's, it's more natural and organic for me. But now if I get messages or comments, you know, after the fact, I just, you know, I want, I feel, I feel, um, well, first of all, I really, 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 really value everybody's messages and comments and all the other stuff. And I, I want to write something back that's touching or shows that, that I'm, uh, that I value that person, that I feel that that person is, I appreciate their time, them, them taking the time to write me a comment. Because honestly, you know, time is a very precious commodity. And once it's spent, you don't get it back. And so for anyone to spend time writing me any type of comment or any type of message, 
I value it greatly because they could be doing that with somebody else. And so what I end up doing is spend a lot of time thinking about what I'm going to write to that person that is sincere and, and worthy and stuff. And then I want to type a book and then I prefer to do that on a uh, keyboard, you know, on, on a laptop or a computer, which both of those are down right now. I, I'm, I'm very hard on technology, you know, uh, you know, it, it, a lot of these uh, companies claim that they've got wild stallions, but when I break them in, they're not, <laughs> they go right down to the ground. <laughs> uh, so far, the phones are, are the only thing that barely holds up, you know. Uh, but anyway, um, what was my point? Oh, I'm socially awkward. I'm very socially awkward. It may not seem like it, but I am. And uh, but but once I warm up to people, you can't get rid of me. I'm a pest. And um, I don't know. And then and then what ends up happening is I get overwhelmed. You know, I end up with a lot of messages, and then I feel so guilty. You know, because I need to give these people the time that they deserve and, and really write something great back great to them. And then I get another message, another message. And before I know it, it's a couple of weeks to uh, a month or two later. <sighs> and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I feel bad. I need to work on that. And I, what I've been thinking about doing is I need to divide my time up better. I need to be more organized. I can't be like that because it's whether I intend to do it or not, it's a little disrespectful. And I'm, I apologize. And, and and I'm going to try to change that. And it's going to take some time for me. And I figured what I would do is that maybe I'll take one day out of the week and that would be my social media day where I'll just talk to people, just talk to people, tap, 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 tap on the phone, uh, get all my messages in and stuff like that. And that's very doable. There's no reason why I can't do like a once a week gig. So that's, that's something that I need to um, think about invest my mental energies in i think that's the best route to go other than hiring like some social media manager or something like that but i ain't got the money for that <clears throat> maybe i can um draw pictures for them <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe that that would be the uh payment but no nah, no nah. it's just something i need to do i need to i need to get on the ball and figure that out Okay, let me answer some comments. I forgot what I was even talking about. Oh, Indie Comics Explosion. So anyway, that was an experiment to unite fans and indie comic creators. It's doing well. But once I set my mind to it and I get a lot of this stuff done, uh, I will start. I'll get a, hundred, a couple hundred people uh, in that group. And then uh, who knows where it'll go from there. It could be a total failure or it could be a success. I have no grand expectations, but I do have grand plans. We'll see how it goes. Um, I think it's doing decent right now. I'm, I'm really, I'm happy with, with where it's going. It's, it's about, uh, as successful, successful as I expected to be. I will say though, that there is a couple of people that, that, that are noticing my experiment and they're attempting the same experiment on their own. And I am totally fine with that. <laughs> you know, the more the merrier, you know, people starting to other groups kind of based on the same concept, um, after the fact. Which there's probably some groups that may have tried to do the same thing, you know, prior to me. And, uh, but I, th I think it's funny and it's cool, you know. Um, because the more of the people that's trying to unite uh, fans and indie comic creators together, the more people that's trying to do that, uh, the better off we'll be, you know, because somebody's bound to be successful with it, you know, to create a uh, platform or a um, system or a Facebook group that can, uh, that can do that with, you know, good success. So let's start inking here. I'm talk, 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 talk. All I do is talk, talk, talk. Um, and one last thing about Indie Comics Explosion. It's in the comments. You you want to uh, uh, check that link out, okay, to get over there. Because a lot of the Wildcat Anthology stuff that we're talking about, you can look it up there. You, uh, be sure to read each and every one of those updates. Yeah, it'd be like uh, Wildcat Anthology Update number one, number two, number three. It's all the way up to number six now, and it give you details and stuff that you need to know and kind of where we're at, where, where we're at with it. If you're interested, or if you want to contribute, and I'm still looking for contributors, by the way. I like to get like uh, 
10 people or something. And some of you'd be like, CP, you don't, you don't want like a bunch of people contributing. Why not? <laughs> I feel like the more the merrier. I feel like, uh, you know, like I want a lot of pages. I want a lot of material because I want people to take that anthology and sit down and, and read it and really enjoy it and, 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 and see our work, see your work. And get excited and and then you know want to look you up and then see that you you're the creator of such and such and such and so and and here's your social medias and and I don't know it's just a really fun thing I want it to be a fun thing if anybody's getting stressed out about it stop stop what you're doing put your pencils down <laughs> put your paper down breathe it's not don't let it stress you just have fun with it just have fun and I feel like if you have fun you're gonna do good work. All right, so let me go ahead and I'll answer some more comments here in a sec. And, you know, because he's probably getting bored of me just like going yada, 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 yada. I'll tell you something else. So I, I was using Ethan von Schaiba. I like to say his name that way, Ethan von Schaiba. Um, I used his Vespas as a reference, you know, I was using it. Well, he, that's the only way you can get reference for the Vespas is, you know, cause he's the only one that's drawn it so far, as far as I know. And, um, used a lot of his stuff as reference. And for this one, I didn't use, um, as reference. And I, and I noticed that a lot of the, um, the insect started taking on uh, more of a character of its own. It started to, um, what am I trying to say here? I, I started finding more of my own way to do it, you know, that I thought was interesting, you know, kind of deviating a little bit from his, um, his formula. And I was happy overall with, with kind of how it was coming together. You know, it's a little bit more scritchy, scratchy, a little bit more, uh, sinister because, um, you know, I got the, I always like to draw the, the, the brow kind of coming down and, uh, and I feel like that, that implies anger, uh, something being sinister, something being, you know, whatever, however you want to take it. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Uh, Jim Cox says, uh, sounds awesome. That's in reference to the, uh, the Wildcat remake. Thank you, sir. Um, G uh, Gibb says, a group of geese is a gander. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. So what's good for the goose is good for the flock of geese. Well, oh, thank you. Thank you so very much. You know, there's all these expressions that we use every day. Well, maybe just me. Maybe I'm the only person that has problems with the English language. But there's all these expressions that we use all the time. And we never take, take a thought to what they mean. We never, never, ever do. We just use them, and, and then we suck the life out of them. I'm going to give you an expression right now, and I don't want you to get offended at me. Don't get sensitive. <laughs> uh, but son of a bee. I'm, I, I, I'm not going to say the word, but you know what it is. Son of a bee. Well, you son of a bee. Everybody says it like that, you know, when they get mad at somebody. Well, they don't do it feminine like how I did it, but, you know. You son of a bee. You know, you son of a bee. But I want you to think about it, though, what you're really saying when somebody says that. When when someone says in anger to somebody else, you son of a bee, here's what they're really saying. Uh, they're saying that if, if you're the son of a bee, of a female dog, what is what is a female dog that's called that? It's, it's usually, you know, it's... <laughs> It's a dog, you know, it sleeps with anything, you know, goes in heat and stuff, has uh, mutts, which aren't thoroughbreds, and so if you're a son of a bee, you're basically a mutt, and you don't know who your father is, and so when, when you say son of a bee, it's like a, it's a very sly, but on the nose way of saying that your mother is a whore. I bet when you was tuned in today, you didn't know I was going to go that route, but I did. <laughs> but, 
But this is the stuff I think about, you know. And so the proper way to say son of a bee is to do it slowly. So like if you're really mad at somebody, don't say, you son of a bee. Go, you know what you are? You're a son. You're a son of a... <laughs> I feel like that would make that person far more angry than uh, had you said it the regular way with speed and less caress. <clears throat> People's like, CB, you've went too far. Why did you talk about that? I don't know. I think about these things. I think they're interesting. Some of you might find it interesting. I hope. If anyone's offended, I apologize. Not my intent. Let's see. A writes, uh, you need the more you know type jingle. I'll get one. I, I will get that. I will find that. You know, Prism Studio is pretty awesome. You know, I, you can't really add guests, but you can do everything else in the world, I think. And it's free. And so I guess it's free, you know, probably the Chinese like collecting all my data or something, you know, some stupid paying the cost with my freedom. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's awesome app, you know, I just wish that you could add, add guests, you know, and then, then I would be fully satisfied with it. It'd be great. <clears throat> um, but I'll, I'll find a way to add that jingle. Every once in a while, I have these little little uh, moments of wisdom. Um, this been comics rights. I always seem to tune in late. I'll have to rewind uh, to see what I missed. Let me tell you something. You missed quite a bit. We talked about... Uh, l let me show you. Uh, some of you may have missed this, and I'll put it back up there. Question of the day. Question of the day, what movie would you like to see a remake of? Now, I said Horror Express is the big one I'd like to see a remake of, and maybe The Stuff, The Stuff. But I'm fine if they never do a remake of The Stuff, because it's great as it is. But I feel like Horror Remake is oh, Horror Express, I'm sorry. It's just one of these gems that's just kind of sitting there. It's just begging for somebody to come in and um, remake it. And do it justice. You know, not one of these sloppy remakes done by uh, Hollywood producers that are just trying to make a quick buck. No, 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 no. I mean, one of these where you got a, a, uh, a director who has a vision, who knows what he wants to do with it, you know. One of those type of things. That's what I want. Maybe I need to be that director. I'm just going to quit what I'm doing right now. Boards for it. Go to Hollywood make the movie. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> yeah. It's turning out pretty good. I'll eventually muck it up though. I want to take Gibbs advice and when I muck it up, I'm going to black most of it out. You won't even be able to tell what's happening. <laughs> I'm going to blame him. I'm going to blame him. Um, that's been comics rights. Uh, I think, ah, oh, shoot. I think Mel Gibson's son would make a cool Logan. Hmm. I, I, I've not seen, I don't know what Mel Gibson's son looks like. You know, I, I take your word for it though. I want to have to start searching the internet, you know, looking up Clint Eastwood's son, Mel Gibson's son. And then there'd be like some weird, um, uh, new spy pedophile software be like ask me questions like why am I looking up celebrity sons <laughs> Chris Hansen show up at my house <laughs> have a seat over here this is my kitchen <laughs> what no, no, come here come here CB CB sit down over here so uh so uh you like to look at pictures of uh Clint Eastwood's son well, I wouldn't say I like to look at pictures. It, it's 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 more like um, 
it's like a Pete Townsend thing. Okay. I, and somebody, somebody was telling me, and I was just doing research, uh, -huh, research. You also looked up Mel Gibson's son on the internet. Well, again, you know, I, I, I can give you, I can give you these people's names. Uh, uh, one's, uh, Gibb, Gibb's one guy. And, 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 the, and the, and the, and the other guy, um, is, is, uh, is uh, 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 Des Payne's comics, okay? Uh, yeah, sure, 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 sure. How long have you had an infatuation with celebrity sons? I don't, Chris Hansen, I don't have an, an affection for celebrity sons. I really don't. That's not what your internet search history says. See what you guys done to me. You see what you've done. You, you're messing me up. You're destroying my life. I'm going to zoom in what time my life is destroyed. Okay, let's see. We'll go here. I don't like how that looks. Eh, it is what it is. Just one of those things. Say other comments here. Scott Eastwood, look him up. Scott Eastwood. Uh, the Lion's Den. Hello, good sir. Yo, just got done with drawing chapter one of my comic in pencil, but text not written at this time. For those who don't know, you can look the Lion's Den up on Twitter. And he's uh, working on his comic, and he's he's getting a lot done. He's he's uh, kicking butt, taking names, taking no prisoners. If you ever expect to see Lion's Den take prisoners, you're going to be very disappointed because um, they're all dead. They didn't make it. Because when he draws his comics, he means business. Man, I really like how this uh, Vespa is coming together. It's kind of playful and, and serious all at the same time. I kind of got a turnip thing going on here. But that's okay, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I like the way I do the Vespa's better than Ethan Metzgiver. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, buddy. I just like the way I do them better. I like how it's coming together. <clears throat> Despain's Comics writes, uh, I invited a few people to the Facebook group. Well, I really appreciate that. I, I saw a few, I saw a few people and, and, uh, is asking for approval. And I clicked approve. I need to, I need to get it set to where, you know, they don't need my approval. They can just come on in, you know, just come on in. One of the rules that I have for the Indie Comics Explosion Facebook group is no Ray-Bans. Leave them at the door. Don't you come in with no Ray-Bans. Don't you come in with no sunglasses. You're going to have trouble. <laughs> Don't you do it. Unless, unless, uh, the only exception to the Ray-Ban rule is um, if you draw like a superhero with Ray-Bans on and then you say that you can buy the Ray-Bans at your website for like 20 bucks or five dollars or 50 cents then it's allowed <laughs> otherwise no ray-bans not allowed i will not allow it mm -hmm. that seems to be the thing with facebook groups there's always that guy comes in with the ray-bans I bet there's some guy, though, who goes in these Facebook groups who sells the Ray-Bans and he makes a jack because he does something that his peers don't do. He, he probably talks to people and makes friends with them. And he's like, you know what? Uh, you know, I got to know you really good these past several weeks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like we're friends. If we're really friends, you would buy my Ray-Bans. You know what, dude? I'm going to buy your Ray-Bans. <laughs> I guess that's what they're called. Is they called Ray Bands? What do you call those sunglasses? I don't know. 
Is is my um, hate of Ray Bans making you want to buy the sunglasses? You can't even see what I'm drawing. I'm moving off page again. <clears throat> but thank you for inviting uh, people to the group. I really appreciate it. Uh, and and I encourage everybody else to do the same thing. You know because somebody may get use out of it. You know everybody can network, talk about crap. You can also do the same thing at Art Casters. The Art Casters. Um, I think it's called the Art Casters on Facebook. It may just be the Art Casters. But yeah, you can do the same thing there. You could do the... There's a couple other groups, yeah. But my, my small fledgling group, you can do that there too as well. Wow, I like how this is coming together. His favorite panel so far. You know, it, it actually looks like I kind of know what I'm doing. Having a rare moment here. Hmm. I listened to another episode of Rob's Observations. Now, I don't know if you watched uh, yesterday's day for yesterday's episode. Um, if not, it's okay. But I mentioned at the tail end of it about Rob's observations and, and Rob's observations is a podcast done by, um, one, uh, Rob Liefeld, you know, of, uh, Captain America, Oh, heroes were born fame, young blood, uh, new mutants, cable, X force, uh, you know, that guy. And, um, uh, I, I just love it. I feel like the guy's fully honest. I only feel like there's only like three times maybe in all of his like 10, 20 hours worth of podcast audio that he left details out, you know, that were unflattering. Uh, so that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I can tell he's being honest about stuff too. That's just me. You know, some of you may disagree. But uh, I'm a life I'm a life field boy. Gil Bright's, uh not guys. I, I I just I can't handle it no more. I can't take it. I got to hit the sack. <laughs> well, thank thanks for tuning in and being here and stuff and and uh, for the for the uh, the links and everything. Really appreciate it. And uh, you have a good night, sir. Mm -mm -mm. So that's how it starts. One guy leaves and everybody else starts to join him. He's better not leave me. Don't you do it. Let me let me at least ink a little bit more of this bug. <laughs> the rest of you. Gilb is free to go. Gilb, I, he, he has my blessing and my permission. But the rest of you are stuck here. Don't just leave me. God, I don't know what happened to these wings, but uh, they are what they are. <laughs> don't this uh, last panel look comic booky? I like that. It's the first comic booky thing that I've drawn in forever. Uh, okay, we're looking good. We're looking good so far. It's coming together. I think it looks nice. We're getting down to here. <clears throat> um, Randy writes, uh, Night Gib, go back, doomed barbarian indeed. Uh, just to remind everybody, uh, I don't have my other phone handy. Uh, somebody else might be able to enlighten me if they have free time. Um, on Doom Barbarian, the last time I checked it, I think it was either yes today or yesterday. They was uh, he was around a little over three hundred dollars on um, funding it. Uh, it is a fifteen hundred dollar go. And uh, for not for those that don't know, Doom Barbarian is a awesome character. You know, in in the vein of uh, I don't know, uh, like Conan. And it's kind of got like this uh, Sam Keith vibe, a little bit of a uh, dash of uh, 
uh, what, 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 what's that artist that um, Simon Beasley, L- little dash of Simon Beasley, and uh, and it's just fun, you know. It's it's got that trauma traumaville vibe to it, you know. It's it's intergalactic, post apocalyptic mayhem that's just so wonderful to to see and experience, you know. And uh, the cool thing is, and, and I want to plug this too, I just want to remind everybody that Doomed Barbarian is also on Webtoons. <laughs> it's on Webtoons. So you can check it out there, and there's like 60 pages maybe, give or take. I, well, I know there's at least 40. That's as, that's as far up as, as, as uh, um, uh, I got it read up to like uh, a couple days ago. It was like 40, at least 40 plus pages, probably like um, upwards to 60 or more. I don't know. There's a lot of pages and you, you can read it for free. And more importantly, uh, social, so show some love and support for Gibbs effort on, um, doom barbarian by rewarding him with some cash and backing his book. So you can get it in the mail. And read it for yourself in person. I think that would be the best thing. So be sure to check out the webtoons. Look up Doom Barbarian there. And check out his Indiegogo. Which uh, should be right, you know, right here. Click that link. Uh, and check it out. You notice how I kind of lost steam there? I was I was selling it really hard. Selling it really, I was selling the hell out of it. And then, like, I was like, oh, 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 I was struggling there at the end. I was struggling. <laughs> I, hate, I hate when I do that. You know, when I, when I get on a good, I get a good tear. And then, like, I just kind of veer off the road. And, uh, and the car goes off the cliff and it explodes, like how they used to make cars explode. Well, they never quit really doing that, you know. Cars don't really explode when they go off cliffs. You know, they just kind of lay there. But it looks cool, though. But to back Doom Barbarian. But it's like, uh, yeah, the main point is it's over $300 uh, gathered so far. And he needs to reach, I think, a $1,500 go. So that's very, very doable. It's very, very achievable. So help him do that. Uh, the Lion's Den writes, just send my ideas for Wildcat on Twitter. Awesome. Are you talking about that suggestion that, that you had uh, day four yesterday where like ideas on how to fix some of the story that I was working on for Wildcat? I think that's what you mean. I could be wrong. You might be talking about something a little different. It doesn't matter. I'll find out on Twitter. I'll, I'll check your message out. This camera is going berserk. I hate it when it goes light and dark. You know, there's some days when I use this camera and it doesn't do it. And there's other days when it just decides it's going to do whatever it wants to do. Whatever its little heart's desire is. You just want to hear a good conspiracy theory? It's almost time to go because uh, I think a lot of you are probably getting tired um, and I don't want to bore you to death. Uh, but I, I'll hit you with a conspiracy theory before we go. How about that? Would you like that? Good bedtime conspiracy theory here at Sketching Past Midnight. If you indulge me, let me uh, uh, gulp a little bit of this water. Okay, here's the conspiracy theory. Uh, it's about Britney Spears. Now, the last time I did this, uh, my internet uh, got terrible and, and everything got really botchy. Uh, also, when I was talking about uh, kidnapped children, same thing started happening. So, that's a conspiracy theory in and of itself, but make of that what you will. You've been warned. So, anyway, Britney Spears. I remember many years ago, uh, she'd been like a child star, like forever. Started out with that. Uh, what was it? Uh, 
where she was in that uh, na 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 baby one more time. I think that's what it was. Something like that. And she had on like a mini skirt and ponytails. She was in school type of video thing. Well, anyway, um, that's how she started out. And she's had a feud with uh, Christina Aguilera. That was kind of dumb because I don't know why. I guess I guess Christina Aguilera kind of felt like she's a greater singer and and uh, Britney didn't deserve all the uh, credit she got. Uh, Jeremy Burst writes, uh, she was on Star Search. She was on Star Search. And uh, both Christina Aguilera, um, I'm going to get to the conspiracy theory here in a second. I'm just kind of giving a, you know, background for those who don't know. Christina, uh, Britney Spears, and uh, Justin Timberlake and a whole host of others were on the... Uh, Mickey Mouse Club <laughs> at one point back in the day when they used to do that. And I don't, I don't, I don't think they do that anymore, but that used to be a thing. That's interesting. So anyway, Britney Spears, since, since she was, uh, barely a teenager has, uh, been in the public spotlight forever. And she's had people telling her what she can and can't do her whole life, where she can and can't go, what she can and can't say. You know, how fast she's allowed to grow up, not grow up, and all this other stuff. And that, 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 that has to get old, you know. And I remember one day, it made the news many years ago now, that uh, she had shaved all her hair off. You know, she, she had this, um, what is it, uh, Seinhead O'Connor, I can't remember the lady's name. But, you know, she had she, her, her hair was burned off. It was gone. And everybody was freaking out, and they were saying that she had lost her mind. And I was like, I, I, I disagree with that totally. I mean, some of you might not, but I feel very strongly that's not what that was about at all. A lot of people missed, missed the point, missed the boat on that. She was uh, making a statement. She was tired of being controlled. I mean, everybody for her whole life has been telling her what she can and can't do, where she can and can't go. And she's the one that's making everybody money. If there's no Britney Spears, there's no agents, there's no uh, tax people, there's no bodyguards, there's no directors, there's, I don't know, you can go, you know, uh, choreographers, no dancers, uh, no, on and on it goes. Without her, you don't have all that crap. But people didn't see that way. People, People start to view other people as property, whether they mean to or not. And that's kind of what happened to her, you know. She became property. And she got tired of it. So by her um, shaving off her hair, that was her way of taking back her body, taking ownership of it, you know, and and uh, signing rebellion. And I just remember everybody tried to make it seem like she had lost her mind, and I don't think that's what that was at all. And then in recent years, I've I've seen or heard things, let me put it that way, that kind of confirm that suspicion, that confirm that belief. There are rumors, treat them as you will, because again, this is a conspiracy theory, that Britney Spears is being held against her will. Yeah, what do you think about that? Apparently. Okay, now, now think about this. One of her backup dancers uh, she shacked up with, and she had one or two kids with, and it didn't work out. And they're like, I guess they're like divorced or whatever. And her, I think her dad, I think it's her dad. Her dad, Britney Spears' dad, got custody of her kids. He took he took her to court, court, and I guess I guess he declared her unfit. And also, he, Britney Spears' dad has. Not just custody of her kids, but he has guardianship, legal guardianship over Britney Spears. And he controls where she goes, what she says, what interviews, all that stuff. He controls her social media, all of it. Uh, Britney Spears' mom apparently has been on social media saying that her daughter is a hostage and that she's being forced to take uh, sedative medications. 
<laughs> and all all these different things. See how crazy that is? Now, some of you be like, I don't know about that, CB. Well, no, that, that really does happen. That really does happen. I think what you will about Michael Jackson. He may or may not have pediddled kids. And he'll have to answer answer for that, you know, in the great beyond. Uh, but that's a different issue. But one thing is for sure, a lot of people were controlling where he went and where, where he didn't go. He had he had very little freedom. He ended up taking a lot of um, muscle relaxers and, and all these different things to help him sleep. But how much of that was his idea? You know, who knows? There's a lot of people, when you become successful, they try to weasel their way into your life. And they just suck that life out of you. They just want to use you as a ATM machine. And they don't care, you know, about your happiness or your state of mind or your freedom or any of that stuff. They'll, they'll keep the train going. And the more control you give them, the, the more of a tyrant they become, you know, and then pretty soon you can't get that control back. Pretty soon you don't have that freedom anymore once you give that power up, you know. So you have to very be very careful about that sort of thing. I'm not saying that any of us is going to be hot shot celebrity anytime soon. Be mindful of it. It's just something interesting, you know, that I've observed Seemed like I had another little interesting point about it, you know, and I can't remember what it was. It's one of these things that's kind of slipped my mind. But I feel bad for Britney Spears, you know. She lost custody of her kids, lost control over her life. Um, to add to the conspiracy, and this isn't nothing I heard, but it's just something I've observed. One of the last videos she did, not the main last, but... She did a video where, a uh, music video where she's standing on top of an upside down pyramid. Now, for those that don't know, the pyramid is a, um, you know, it goes back to ancient Egypt, of course. Many, many cultures around the world have uh, pyramids, not just the Egyptians. Um, but uh, a lot of people attach the pyramid these days with the. Uh, Masonic imagery, masonry, Illuminati, and all this other stuff, and the fact that she's standing on one that's upside down, uh, one could infer that she's like thumbing her nose at 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 that ideology, you know. No, just interesting things. Interesting things. I'm not saying, you know, you can take with that what you will. I just think that's uh, something to think about, but. Um, yeah, I hope she gets custody and every kid's back one day and then gets more control over her life. Yeah, it's just the whole thing's just mind boggling. Abe writes, uh, crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. I mean, uh, uh, look into that, you know, uh, what time I'm getting in trouble for looking at Mel Gibson and Clint Eastwood's kids. <laughs> it's going to look up Britney Spears and, and, uh, you know, see, see how, you know, if I'm full of crap or if there's any validity to what I'm saying. Um, the whole thing is just like, wow, you know, and I just remember, you know, my, my suspicion about her cutting her hair off all those years ago. I felt like all this stuff confirms it, you know, it's like, she just, you know, wants to be, she wants her life back. You know, she, she's never had her life. Think about it. She's been a child star. When you're a child star, how much of your life is yours? And how much of it is, is other people telling you, you know, what kind of life you can have? Uh, Jimmy Burtz writes, there's pyramids on every continent. That is true. That gets in a whole different topic. I may have to save that for a different video, but I will say this. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people treat ancient people like idiots. I, I hate that. I despise that so much. And it, and if and if modern people don't treat ancient ancient people like idiots, they also uh, treat them. Uh, not only do they treat them as idiots, but they but often they claim aliens built every 
damn thing on earth. I'll, I'll be blunt about it. It's just so annoying, you know. Uh, Egyptians didn't have the capabilities to build these pyramids. It was aliens. Listen, I believe in the possibility aliens and, and everything like that. Don't discount it or anything like that. And, and I'm not a, a prude against the idea or whatever. But this assumption that ancient man was stupid, was incapable of, of building wonderful monuments and stuff is, is absurd. I, I can't stand that. I mean, well, anyway, getting back to the point, you know, there's pyramids on every continent. Yeah, there is. And, and you know, it's evidence of possibly uh, cultures that are influencing one another. And so if cultures are influencing one another, then that would go on to say that that there was worldwide trade between civilizations that, that you otherwise wouldn't think exist. You know, I mean, that they had knowledge of each other. But we seem to have this idea that um, somehow the Egyptians and then um, Phoenicians and the, <laughs> I don't know, uh, the Romans and the, the, the Vikings, uh, just different groups from different time periods, you know, you name it, that they didn't uh, get around and travel much. They just kind of travel in their immediate area. That, that's bull crap. We, we actually, in, in America, we we found Viking uh, carvings. We found Roman uh, carvings, I think. We found Egyptian carvings. Uh, legit stuff, but it doesn't really get... When I say that, it makes it sound like a conspiracy theory, but you, you can look into it. Um, I'll, I'll, stuff that, you know, Egyptians, Vikings, Romans, um, freaking... Um, what do you call those? Uh, Crusader. We get Crusader stuff <laughs> in America, carvings and artifacts and stuff. You know, so there's been people coming to America for centuries, uh, long before Columbus. And some people be like, "Well, why didn't uh, everybody else in the world know about it?" Because, and this is the conspiracy theory: it was a secret. You have to remember that living in Europe and other parts of the world, it was kings, queens, emperors, and god kings that ruled those civilizations. You had you had whatever freedom that they dictated that they said that you were allowed to have, and that was it. But imagine that if you was a captain, or if you was a pirate or a captain, and you needed a place to hide treasure, you needed a place to uh, you know to chill in secret, whatever. You know, uh, the Americas, Greenland, and places like that, uh, Nova Scotia, you, you would go out there and you would hang out and hide stuff that you don't want people to find. And um, and only, you know, your, your crew, who were probably illiterate, probably didn't know how to read or write, uh, did not, uh, most of them probably couldn't tell you how, how to chart that course to get back to there. It was the captain and uh, his skippers and all this other stuff. I don't know, whatever. First mate, not sure on the whole captain lingo, that they'd be the ones that know how to get back there. And the kings and queens and the god kings and the emperors of these lands, uh, many of them probably weren't told. Now, maybe some of them were. But that's how you would keep the secret, you know? It's just, uh, it was something illegal. <laughs> you know and it was a great distance to get to these lands too it wasn't safe it wasn't, a, it wasn't a safe journey but I believe that the world was a lot more connected in ancient times than what we think and I believe the civilizations were a lot more advanced you know as far as like electricity I don't know some people think the Egyptians may have had electric uh, there were some ancient civilizations that were familiar with how to create batteries and stuff but as far as like street lamps and stuff eh I don't know I'll leave that up to you, but uh, when people ask, you know, how did uh, the Egyptians build the pyramids? Well, it's called concrete. <laughs> it's called concrete. <laughs> it's like the Egyptians uh, probably have their own special, unique blend of concrete using materials on hand, uh, the, the natural sands of the desert. Um, the, the Romans had their own, I think the Greeks, or maybe both, 
I'm going to say the Romans, just for the sake of the argument. The Romans had their own special blend of concrete. I think it used volcanic ash and a couple other stuff. It's very, very strong concrete. And um, so I think the ancient world was filled with a lot of different civilizations that knew how to make concrete. Uh, different recipes for different civilizations. And that's how you can get these big, large stones and monolithic st structures. Um, you could use wooden frames to create the, the shape on, on, on spot. And then you could basically just wheelbarrow or pack bags of sand and, and pour it in there and uh, just let it dry. You don't have to lift nothing other than the sand and uh, buckets of water, you know. Or whatever the active ingredients are. And everybody treats these ancients like they're idiots, you know, like, oh, everything has to be carved, you know, you can't you can't get these lines that straight. Yeah, you can. <laughs> oh boy. Um of course there's probably some stones and stuff that got lifted and everything like that, but and then there's probably some water tools. Water tools that might have been able to cut through stone. You know, the Greeks had uh, what's called Greek fire, a recipe that we no longer know how to make, which basically the Greek fire, the way it worked, is um, on their ships, they had these dragon-shaped heads, and they would shoot this liquid out. And when it hit the water, it would catch on fire. It would actually ignite this chemical that would come out, this dragon-shaped heads on these boats. And so that's where part of the mythology, uh, mythology of dragons um, blowing fire comes from is uh, from the Greeks uh, using these uh, these metal uh, dragon heads that would spew these chemicals out and burn ships and stuff with it, you know. But I guess my whole point is the world, the ancient world was a lot more uh, technologically advanced than what we think they are. You know, I'm not saying that they had the internet or anything like that. But yeah, they knew about things like concrete and stuff like that. And then some of you'd be like, "Well, if that's the case, CB, you know, why why didn't it carry on through? And and uh, you know, why don't we have flying cars and stuff now? You know, if they were so advanced back then. Well, uh, civilizations come to an end. Uh, there's evidence that there was uh, mass that that there was one or two, maybe three events that happened in ancient times that set civilization back and you can actually look at the stonework that the uh the ancients of of egypt and romans and stuff had done where the base of a lot of their stonework is advanced you know smooth edges tight lines and stuff evidence of what i call ancient concrete but then like when this catastrophe hit all these civilizations like when they went to rebuild I guess a lot of the people that knew how to do this stuff, the craftsmen, the, uh, the masons, were dead. And so that knowledge didn't get passed on. Um, and so what ended up happening is they would just stack stones uh, crudely on top of these structures. You know, so, they, so they ended up having to do it the hard way instead of the easy way. And uh, so you can, you can actually look at evidence of that you know, throughout the ancient world of where it looks like there was like... Uh, either earthquakes or there's evidence of a, a great flood. Now you can say, CB, you're talking about Noah's flood. Well, I don't know. Uh, sometimes ancient sources, wh whether you believe them or not, you know, coming from religious texts or, or whatever, can actually have a lot of validity to them, you know, because there's evidence that, uh, at least in the Mediterranean, that there was a, a great disaster that happened, and that could have been based on like a comet hitting. Um, could have been an earthquake, you know, shifting the lands, continental shifts and stuff, causing uh, catastrophe in these areas. And uh, all these ancient civilizations experienced it, you know. I'm going to blame you for this, Jeremy Burtz, for talking about this. Losing my viewers. <laughs> all right, Randy says, uh, in reference to talking about uh, Britney Spears, but she grew her hair back and went right back to that lifestyle, so maybe she just snapped. Uh, well, no, I I can say that she did snap. Uh, I do feel like it was a, an act of rebellion type of snap. But as far as like her growing her hair back and stuff like that, 
Uh, you have to remember she's surrounded by 10, 20, 30, 40 people that are constantly telling her what to do all the time. And, you know, as one person, you can only take, take so much, you know, and, and eventually, unless you're incredibly strong willed, you're going to end up capitulating to, uh, the demands that everybody's like throwing at you, you know, uh, a good example, not to get political, but just for the sake of argument. And there was a woman recently, you, you can see the video all over Twitter and uh, social media. Uh, this woman was sitting in this uh, bar, restaurant, whatever, and uh, a bunch of Antifa, or uh, I think it might have been Black Lives Matter. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, they come in there and they're, making, they're forcing everybody to raise their fist in solidarity. And there's a lot of, you know, there's a couple of people I guess didn't want to do it, but they, eventually they did. But it was this one woman that would not uh, cave into it, you know. And they were getting in her face and being very confrontational, you know, as a large group of people. And I'm not saying Britney Spears went through that where she had like 20 people surrounding her, yelling at her, telling her to grow her hair back. <laughs> but I'm talking about, you know, in her inner circle, everywhere she goes, they're like, Britney, you, you, you need to put on a wig. You need to grow your hair back. You know, we're, we're losing sales. Everybody's thinking you're nutty. We need to put a good face on this. You know, this is going to cost money. And it's going to hurt our tours. It's going to blah, 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 blah. And uh, eventually, you know, when you got so many people in your face, you know, you'll, you'll end up caving. Not everybody, but most people. All right, let's zoom out. Let's get a good gander here. I like how the bottom panel's coming together. Uh, I, I need to draw, I need to sketch out my alien pretty good and make sure I get him looking good and uh, the leg thing be fairly simple. Probably want to put a little bit more honeycomb in the background to give it more zest. But I'm uh, really happy with how this turned out all together. And uh, again, you know, here's uh, my wildcat anthology contribution I'll, I'll be starting on that you know fairly soon i mean i guess i already have since i got the thumbnails um uh, here is uh the the makeshift thumbnails the wildcat first issue that's not good when everything's so empty like that but trust me it's gonna fill up it's gonna fill up i had a writing issue I was trying to make sure that things made sense where they clicked and everything. So uh, I had to stop before I continued on because um, it was a big hiccup. I'm past that hiccup now, and now I have a new one. It's a small one. I'll work through it. I'll get through it. And once I get through the small one, I should start banging out these pages fairly soon. And um, I've also uh, been doing... Uh, I don't have my notebook handy. I got it put up. I don't want to get up and get it because I'm lazy. I've also been working on a horror anthology, not not putting it together myself, but a contribution to to Will Avengers horror anthology, and so uh, getting ready to get back on the ball with that. So anyway, um, in any parting words, guys? I, I guess this is this is where we say goodbye. Uh, any thoughts? Any suggestions? And uh, I'm going to buy you some time. What time I put the lid on this ink and then uh, put my brush up here. So, you know, as always, you know, I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, all you wonderful people, all my loyal royal, because that's how you think, think of you all, all my loyal, royal, faithful and true crew been with me from the beginning all the way to the fiery end and for all the people that's uh, hopped on the train since then thank you thank you thank you and uh also uh you've been watching sketching past midnight live uh two hours into the show i think it's been a fairly good one very very uh, substantive uh interesting at the very least whether you agree or disagree and this is C.B. Smallwood reminding you, be the tide that rises all boats. Be the change. Be that change that you want to see. And please remember to always draw faster. Carpe diem, my friends, and seize the day. Until next time, this is C.B. Smallwood uh, saying goodbye. Doot, 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 doot,